Well, let's start off with one of the deals that we know is set for next year. And, you know, we'd heard Michael McDowell's name tossed around as possibly a successor to Eric Almirola in the 10 car. But uh, he decided, and this is before his win over the weekend, that he was going to stay with front row. Any surprise in that? Or is it just a, the matter of a guy was loyal to the people who stuck with him? Well, I'll say this. Uh, I'll say this. I think that, um, you know, the team picked up the option, and I think the team really liked what they saw out of him. And it's like, you're right. You know, the, the questions about Eric Almarella, will he stay or will he go? And, 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 and obviously, yes, uh, Michael had, you know, there were some things that he could bring to Stuart Haas racing, but if you're front row motorsports, uh, you know, Alan, if I'm, if I'm them, I don't, I don't, if I've got an option, I don't, I don't want to lose Michael McDowell at this point, do I? No. And I think, yeah, I don't know if it was Michael's option. Right. So not that he'd want to leave, but I think the team said, yeah, give me Michael McDowell. We're going in a good spot and they built something with him. Right. And he's coming into his own. So that one makes sense. The where the, the question really was is the Zane Smith factor, right? They have decided yep. and announced that they are keeping Todd Gillen who has, you know, immensely improved and he has shown that progress you want to see out of a young driver. You don't, you don't, you can't go from uh, you know, zero to a hundred real quick. Right. And that, NASCAR, but you can make in incremental improvement and he is doing that and he's heading the right direction but they had this zane smith issue to worry about the next big thing the next hot thing probably deserving of a cup ride uh you know it's getting to that time where ford especially probably wants to see him you know move up and move into one of their cup rides and, and front row had that decision to make and so that's the interesting part is that they went with the known entity of todd gilliland and Zane Smith is free to pursue other options. Maybe he goes to the 10 car, you know, Ford wants to keep him under wraps. So that's the, that's the most curious part of the move is that they, they decided early on to let him pursue other options. You make a good point, Alan, about that, because as you're talking about, that makes me think about what Toyota had to go through a couple of years, a few years ago with uh, having Eric Jones at Joe Gibbs racing and then having Christopher Bell and trying to decide which one of those two they were going to have in the one seat that they had available. They chose Christopher Bell over Eric Jones. It sent Jones on a different path, um, but obviously Jones will be back with Toyota next year now that Legacy Motor Club falls into the fold. But uh, yeah, it, it, you know, it is interesting with what will happen to Zane Smith because, you know, what more can you do if you're Zane Smith? You've won a championship in the trucks. You finished second a couple times. You're back in the in the playoffs. You know, it, it's time to move on and move up, whether it's Xfinity or move into Cup. But you know, he he. He's had his time in the trucks, and he doesn't need to be in there anymore. Uh, and as you look at that, you know we're assuming, and we're talking about the ten car as if it has been vacated. But Almirola has not announced a decision yet, Alan. But right now, he's still he, he has had just an, another awful year. Twenty uh, fourth in points right now. Uh, he has one stage win, but uh, this year has not gone as I know he hoped it had. No, not, not 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 say like the Truex example, right? Where where we didn't know if he was going to come back, comes back this year, everything's going well, and say, of course, I'm coming back another year. So there were some questions heading into this year whether Eric Almirola would even race. So yeah, again, we don't know. Uh, that was all the speculation, and maybe the next domino to fall, or is that going to be the first one to fall? But FRM front row, they moved first. But the Zane Smith question is quite interesting because now he is out there as a free agent free to pursue other things if ford wants to keep him under wraps is there something we don't know going on where do they put him because i know they don't want to let him get away that would be crazy all right uh last week during the program we did talk about noah gregson he'd been suspended by legacy motor club uh since then he has asked for his release from legacy motor club and has been granted that release <laughs> Uh, Dustin, so now what happens to that seat is uh, the popular opinion seems to be that it's going to go to Jonathan or Nemechek. Do you see it hearing the same thing? Yeah, I, I think that's the logical way to go. Uh, John Hunter Nemechek having the, you know, having he's had cup experience. It didn't go as well when he was at Front Row Motorsports and then went back to the truck series and kind of built back up. Then uh, at Kyle Busch Motorsports moved over to Joe Gibbs Racing's Xfinity Series team and look at what he's done. He's He's been up there, you know, uh, leading the points at times this year, up toward the top, and was four or five wins this season. So, um, yeah, I think that that it, it makes sense with Legacy Motor Club moving back to Toyota from Chevrolet after this season, um, especially with Martin Truex Jr. saying he's going to be back for another year. So now you put you you can like I said here here's a situation you can put John Hunter Nemechek, 
in the car. And then you can do a couple different things. One, if he does really well and you can keep him there to build up that program or two, um, you know, if it's a case that Martin decides to leave, is there an option to have John Hunter go over there? Or is it a case that, Hey, you're Joe Gibbs racing. This is a really strong car. There's going to be a lot of, a lot of people interested in that car and you have your, you can choose and pick who you want. But, um, yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, John Hunter's well, well received and well thought of in the, in the Toyota camp. And I think this would be a great opportunity with what he's done and giving him another shot at uh, the cup series and, and seeing what he can do now. Yeah. I don't know who else right now in the Toyota camp that I would point at and say, this guy's ready to move into the cup. Do you, Alan? No, I don't. But I do wonder, you know, about sponsorship. I mean, that still counts. So someone has to, if someone's out there with some money, right? You know, I think they would have to be looked at because you still need sponsorship money. I know Toyota does a lot, but, you know, they're adding two more teams. So that's, you know, it's not just new money they're going to come up with to spread around. Maybe they will. Uh, But, you know, sponsorship still factors in. You know, look, all signs, all momentum, all garage talk points to John Hunter Nemechek. But I'm just saying, don't underestimate someone who actually comes with sponsorship and someone to put on the side of the car that's not one of Maury Gallagher's or Toyota's, uh, one of their friends, if you will, one of their companies. And we've seen it before. Look, the Joe Gibbs of the world, the Toyotas of the world, they like to sign veterans, proven winners, and they will bump a prospect out of the way very quickly. They want winners now. Uh, the future doesn't always help them so much. We'll just see how they're treating Legacy Motor Club as uh, as one of their players or as sort of a proving ground before they move them up to the big leagues, if you will, of the Joe Gibbs Racings of the world. Anybody you can think of in the Toyota pipeline right now that you would be, say, ready to move no, on? No, up? but that doesn't – and I think Alan makes a great point. Is like If somebody brings money that um, – you know, I think that 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 could, you know, they don't have to have be somebody who's in the Toyota chain, that it could be somebody from another organization, it could be a driver from another Xfinity team or a driver from a truck team. Or, you know, is it, uh, you know, a, a driver for from a smaller budget cup team that, uh, you know, looking to, to move up and they've got some money and it can make it work. So um, a lot of people point to Austin Hill. Yeah. I mean, that, well, Hill that was has, one. That was one. Funding. Yes. Yeah. That, He's that been that was in one. Toyota before. <laughs> Uh, you know, some people, you know, are putting him in like in a college car or just wondering if he is an opportunity in that open college seat. Because again, when you have funding and you have a little talent and he has a lot of talent, uh, you can, you can open some doors. So I, I'm, I'm not saying I've heard anything, not reporting anything, <laughs> but I'm just saying when you have a bunch of money known to be behind you, it does open offer some opportunities that you have to look at if you are a Toyota or legacy motor club. And I think something else in, in, in now talks about like a, a colleague. And I think one thing to maybe kind of think about, and I don't know if this plays into it or, uh, this is going too deep, but you know, the idea of you look at Shane Van Gisbergen and, mm-hmm. you know, I talked with Justin Marks after the race on Sunday at Indianapolis and, you know, they are still working on track house racing, still working on a plan to have, you know, Shane run next year. But, but as Justin told me, he's like, look, you know, just because he fin- he wins at Chicago and, and finishes 10th in Indy, you know, we shouldn't just put him in a cup car full time next year. And he's like, look, you know, there's Darlington, there's Dover, there's 600 miles at Charlotte. There's 500 laps at, at Bristol's like that's a lot on any driver. And, and with somebody who doesn't have that oval track experience, he says there needs to be a combination of things next year. And obviously they're looking at, you know, a situation. And I wouldn't be surprised where it's, you know, some races in Arca, some races in the truck series, some races in the Xfinity series and, and races in the cup series. And as Justin said, look, track house racing, we're just, we're just a cup team. We're not an Xfinity team. We're not a truck team. We're not an Arca team. Now, obviously, as I mentioned with Colleague, you know, Trackhouse Racing has a relationship with with Colleague. They're Chevrolet teams. Colleague gets its pit crews from Trackhouse Racing, so there is that relationship. So, is there a case that that could Shane could end up in some races there? We've seen the ten car, an all star car this year for Colleague. If that car, can, you know, if things continue there, is that is that a place for him, or at least for some races? You know, we saw Shane make his uh, oval debut in the Nice Motorsports Truck uh, Friday night at Indianapolis Raceway Park, and there's a relationship between Nice and track house racing it would seem natural that you know that shane would be in some truck races and i would think that it wouldn't be surprised to see shane in some uh, you know a couple of some arca races here and there just to, again you're just going to try to get this guy as much oval experience and so if somebody's looking at a ride at at colleague racing how does the shane van gisbergen p- p- potential effect now again you know maybe they're looking at different options for for him in the xfinity series uh, with co- and as opposed to colleague but again I think Colleague would be a very nice location to put Shane. It's a, it, it's a quality program, and there is that relationship between uh, Colleague and, and Trackhouse Racing. 